Looky here, another package, and yes, I'm still blocking off the address, because I don't want any of y'all to find where I am. Welcome to another unboxing, and well, let's see what we got in the mail this time around. I asked this yet, I already know what I got in the mail, because, uh, well, you know, I ordered it. But, uh, just make a small incision on this, because what if you stab it, you know? If you stab it, you're potentially going to break whatever the hell's going to be in there. Like, oops, your toy gonna have it you know what why am i even recording me cutting it open one this is dangerous and two uh don't do that too you kids watching at home or whoever watches my videos actually but um regardless of your age demographic please do not <laughs> cut while recording see you in a bit so let's see what we got all right it's actually seemingly two things so i think so i think if not then i've just been scammed I'm just kidding. Alright, so, got our first one. Yeah, they're both together. So, let's see what they are, alright? You can clearly see what they are in a little bit. Like, you can see a bit of Ultraman Z, and then something mysterious behind it. Let's find out. Alrighty, so we got two intriguing things. We got the uh, DX Guts Hyper Key Ultraman Z Original, and uh, the SH Figuarts Trigger Dark. And I'm really excited to open up this guy. We're going to be playing around with them in a bit, so see you in a bit when we um, open them up. So unfortunately for us, it seems like the hyper key does not come with its battery, or else I would start hearing boot up Zestium or something like that, you know, right now. That thing does this voice. Well, this guy, well, we're going to be opening him up in a bit as well, so uh, we can play around with his posing and see what's up with him, alright? But uh, yeah, it seems like he doesn't have a battery. I'm going to have to check it later on, so I can at least, like, you know play around with my toys because uh i wanted to transform all right so yeah now out of the box um wow what an impressive figure we got over here like god damn okay this needs to focus a bit but like wow that is just simply beautiful you know this reminds me of those like um how seamless the uh it's those big collection toys collectionable toys that they do for the marvel superheroes i think it's the um the hot toys it reminds me how seamless they do they look as well because you can barely see the joints on them and with this guy of course you can see it but trigger dark is a bit more of a complicated design it's kind of like almost not really robotic it's more like very organic to the point where the articulations are not something you would notice because it's it just looks very cool man it's kind of similar to how some rider figures, some of them look very seamless as well as a result because of the very robotic designs, you know? So with Trigger Dark, it's just like, oh my god, it's he's just so beautiful. But um, let's check out his accessories as well. His accessories, we are presented with a bunch of hands and the circle arms, which is just reminding me a bit of how uh, it was dealt with Orb Origin. So... Um, Let's, uh, I'm gonna be switching them out for, like, more, be better arms to pose them around, and we'll see, like, how we can just play around with posing. Alright, and this figure presents us with some, like, lots of great posability, to be honest. And, like, if the Flash is allowing to see some of the details, well, it is a quite shiny figure. Um, not only is the, like, detailing on this really good, I'd say it's very comparable in terms of like the material used to a Shinkocho Seiho figure, you know like the Ultraman Tiga, the Kamen Rider is already recently as of now posting this video released uh, Ultraman, um, it has a bit of rubber on it which makes it feel authentic like a suit much like the Shinkocho Seiho line of toys of uh, Ultraman figures or figure arts in general for Tokusatsu characters, but um, this guy also presents itself with a lot of I don't know, it's just a lot of fun articulation. Out of all the figure at Ultramans I have, he is like the most fun I've had posing around because some of them are kind of stiff. I think it's him and Zet to me that are just a peak. Uh, maybe Zero too, but like definitely Zafi and Orb since they were some of my first ones. Probably that's why they have a few flaws. So they were also like some of the first few like releases. So that's why. But let's move on to the size comparison. Alright, let's start the comparison with some Safubis, ones that you may or may not have. Um, these are standard 6 inch ones, so I really don't have any Spark Dolls to compare them with. Um, actually, never mind, I do. So let's uh, see how well he sizes up with them, you know? Again, 
um, you got a spark doll six inch line and the Noah of course the Noah why because uh, I feel like trigger dark <laughs> the aesthetic of his design overall it just brings me back to the Ultraman Nexus era of Ultraman stuff you know and especially his design it just comes off to me like wow the Noah too let's move on to the next one all right next comparison we have him with uh, Ultraman Z original and the SH Monster Arts Godzilla Final Wars. Um, this is one of the most recent purchases we got a few, like I think last month or so. I actually can't keep track, you know, I've been so busy. Um, but the uh, Zet is also just looks nice with him, you know. I like to assume they're now partners, not really partners, but that they cross paths a lot when they dimension travel with their hosts and have uh, cool adventures. Um, so there's that if you're curious on how these guys look together with your average Ultraman and your um, most recent Monster Arts. I don't know why this thing is like not wanting to focus. And of course a comparison with my Holy Grail of the collection, the SH Monster Arts Godzilla 2000. Now, because he's my favorite, he's going to get compared to all of them. So doesn't that look like a cool team up matchup that... uh? people would want to see, mostly people being just me. it's that time of the month again um actually at the time of recording this i have not edited nor uploaded the previous unboxing which is actually pretty funny and kind of worrisome at the same time so um no, i'm just kidding not worrisome but i have been kind of lazy been busy with stuff but hey we got ourselves another box and you're not seeing that address anytime soon so remember how in 2020 um I like literally did two unboxings and one when I like I was also like I recorded two but then edit them in time and like hey you know what these two arrived around like the same time that's pretty much what I'm doing here and like what did I get this looks like something that would make me lose my dignity and uh actually the funny thing is that I do feel like this was unnecessary in terms of like how big the box was but unfortunately EMS is the only option that is offered in my country but um Yes, this is something that is definitely going to make me lose my dignity. I'm like, what the hell, Jigan is? And I'm like, I don't care. Um, but on the other side, you got Iron King. You know, so it's like, uh, choose your poison, guys. It's either obscure tokusatsu or uh, the most weeb shit thing I could ever think of. <laughs> I'm honestly fanboying right now, or fangirling, however you want to see it. But, um, and because I did not expect these to arrive so quickly. Because when I ordered Trigger Dark, that actually took a while to arrive and to get shipped from uh, Japan all the way over here. And the same with this one. Actually, this one, I literally ordered it last Friday and it arrived quickly, like a starting Monday, I believe. Actually, I forgot. Yeah, I ordered it last Friday, but it didn't get processed until like Sunday or something like that. I, I honestly forgot. Um, but uh, it was a very quick process. But what do we got here? We got the... Act mode, Hibiki Tachibana from Simpho Gear GX. This is her design from the third season of that anime. And we got the hero action figure or evolution toys, Iron King. Iron King, you know? You, you got that over there. So let's open them up. Oh my god. <laughs> I have never gotten. No, actually, I have. The last time I ordered like two articulated figures together was the SH Figure Arts Ultraman Orb and Zafi. So let's, uh, let's see what's up in the package. All right, so yeah, let's look at the accessories, all right? Let's see. Well, of course, Hibiki has a bit more because her display features a lot more things to have on her, like the um, propulsors to her uh, power suit and some things to also have around her suit in general, like the uh, scarf, which can't really be visible, but you can see it over here. As for the Iron King, unfortunately, he only features only very basic accessories. Um... The Iron King, of course, has less because he's an older design from the 1970s. Um, but, uh, other than that, I think these are very cool designs. I really wanted to get one. I really wanted to get, for the longest while, an articulated Iron King. And I was hoping to get an articulated Hibiki for a while. Since uh, 2020, these two have been my obsession. 
in 2020 is when I got into the anime Sinful Gear, which is one of my favorite animes in general, and probably one of my favorite TV shows in general. Well, for the Iron King is one of my favorite an tokusatsus in general, and possibly one of my favorite shows of all time as well. Um, but this year is uh, Hibiki's 10th anniversary for the anime Sinful Gear, while the Iron King, it's his 50th anniversary already in October. Um, but yeah, let's go and see what else these figures offer. Alright, and here we have them out of the package, honestly. Wow, if this thing would even focus on them, then I would be, like, showing you them a bit more. Alright, so we got the Iron King over here, in a nice little pose. And, uh, Hibiki as well. They're both posing. Um, one issue I have, and I was warned about this, but unfortunately it's the only thing there is, is available, technically. Iron King's posability, he's a very loose figure. The figure feels very cheap. Evolution toys are indeed very pricey for what they offer. But luckily, Iron King is one of the lesser known heroes, so it makes him go down in price. Even more with the uh, the current value of the yen, you'll be getting quite the bargain for him. So get him, but get him with something else, all right? <laughs> so it's not the only thing in your package, because honestly, he's kind of disappointing. Um, I can't really hate him too much because it's again one of my favorite Tokusatsu designs from the 1970s. I think it combines like it combines everything great about um, Kamen Rider and Ultraman, just like the show itself. You know, he has a bit of that simplistic nature to him, but um, overall, I think he's an okay figure. As for Hibiki, oh my goodness, she is wonderful. She is very posable, but it's mostly for display. So don't go around what's it called uh, displaying her without her stand or else you're gonna probably have her fall especially if you have her from a fall, hot high shelf she does feel rather fragile but it is a good figure anyways you know um if you want her for display which is what i usually do nowadays then um yeah it's a good it's a good option for you honestly so let's go into the size comparisons all right here they are with uh, last week's or last yeah i think it was last week when i got him in the mail I honestly forgot I lost track, but here's last uh, arrival, the SH figure, it's Trigger Dark. Let's have him a bit more in front so it's a more direct comparison. But yeah, uh, Evolution Toys figures, from what I've heard, they scale a bit better with uh, Ultrax, but I don't mind Iron King being a little bit taller, you know? He is the Giga Chad of my collection, so there you go, and he does scale ver fairly nicely with Hibiki over here. So there you go. Uh, let's go with the next figure comparison. Here they are compared to a figure I standard, which is more around the same scale as the Iron King itself. And uh, Hibiki also scales nicely with him. So she scales nicely with both figure arts and figure I standards, depending on how tall you want her to be compared to your other superheroes or other characters. And last but not least, here they are compared to some SH Monsters. I know the Ghidorah is a third party, but he scales nicely with them, so shut the hell up. Anyways, these are um, them compared with your average Monsters. In case you want to have Iron King with a few of your Kaiju fighting them off, or in case you want Hibiki to be a giantess for once. You sick fuck. And that's it for today's uh, haul video, July haul, um, because I got these guys in July, I ordered them all in July, but these two did arrive in August, and this video is being uh, uploaded in August, but who cares, it's still the July haul for me, um, otherwise these are very solid buys for me, no matter how much I was disappointed a bit by the Iron King, if you're desperate enough to get the figure, and this is the only way you need to get an articulated one, I'd say go for it, um, because there's no other equivalent. At least for now, you know, but I really don't think he's that popular enough to demand like an SH figure arts properly. Um, 
of React Mode Hibiki. She is really great. She's perfect for displaying. I'm probably going to be get, getting Tsubasa and Chris once Tsubasa releases in the following months. That way I don't get them, you know, separately. I get the full collection already finished up. And hopefully they release more of the girls from this show because I would really, really be happy if they released, like, Maria. Uh, either her Dark Gungnir design or her Arglatrom design, whatever. Um, as, and of course the two lovebirds, Kirika and Shirabe. Um, but, and then with, uh, Trigger Dark, well, he's just a really, really great figure overall. I think he's one of my favorites of the figure arts line along with, like, Zed Original. And, uh, the only other figure arts Ultraman I'm planning on getting soon is the, Shin the Shinkocho Seiho, uh, C-type Ultraman. Um, but as for how luckluster, um, Trigger was, Trigger Dark was definitely one of the highlights of the show and I really ended up enjoying him and he ended up becoming one of my favorite Reiwa Ultraman. So for me it was a must get and I think it's very cool because not many people bought him. I don't think he's very popular I think. I'm not sure. So if you want to get one just be sure to search efficiently and you'll probably find a reasonably priced one because again I don't think anyone like many people are buying him so it's uh, get him now you know you never know when he's gonna uh, finish up in stock. But yeah, these were perfect purchases. Again, Iron King's a bit disappointing, but uh, for what it is, I'm very satisfied and very happy with it. And um, yeah, we're probably going to be doing a collection video very soon, so far. At least for a few more buys. I know I said in another video, or probably in one of my other recordings, because at the time of this I haven't even uploaded the previous unboxing, which is Trigger Dark, that I was supposed to uh, do a collection video after getting him, but then I figured out, hey, I'm going to get these two, and, well, now I have to get, you know, the rest of the gears that they've released so far, and maybe the Seho Ultraman, you know, and by then maybe I'll have a bit more, even more writer stuff to show off in my shelves. But, you know, you never know what I'm going to get next, you know, but, uh, yeah, this has been a fun video, fun experience ordering these guys, and lots of hard work to get these guys, you know, so... Thanks, and thanks for watching. Stay tuned for any other content I may do, like more drawing stuff, more gameplays, whatever may come. So, yeah, thanks, and have a nice day. Hey, remember when Hibiki became Ghidorah once?